<laughs> There's no slick way to do that, right? Matt's person stopped recording things because they said it sounded too creepy. That's funny. Oh, and then where's the clicker? There it is. I've done this a few times. <laughs> Sweet. Yep. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to, to Scott. Um, like I said, he's an unknown West Jordan realtor. He's the vice There's not a lot of amazing people who can um, execute the way he does. So I thought you were just gonna stop at the best person you know and just leave it at that. No, he's an amazing person <laughs> I know. He's got a lot of one of the people that I know that has the most on his plate and does it, <clears> you know, it does it without without making it look so um, he actually used as a broker for a while back a few years ago at yeah. an old building. Um, but now he just sells so many homes. He wouldn't have time to do that right now, I don't think. So. I'm still the best person you know. So still you need to know more people. That's the problem. You bet. You bet. So as a few other people might uh, start trickling, and let's just kind of, I want to get a kind of feel for who's here, right? So if you have had your license for less than 30 days, raise your hand. Let's start with this. If you don't have your license yet and you're still taking your tests or classes and haven't tested yet, raise your hand. Okay, so two of you, uh, do you have your test date yet? Tomorrow, tomorrow. wow, and you're here. Awesome. And when do you, when do you test? Still going through the classes. Okay, awesome. Okay, awesome. So less than 30 days. So you're within your first 30 days, okay. Um, within 90 days. Okay, less than a year. We're just gonna go right to that, okay. Um, who in here has closed a transaction? Okay, how long have you been licensed? Four years, full-time, part-time? Okay, so, so part-time. Yeah, okay, and you? Awesome, nine in a year, that's amazing, good job. Where did most of your business come from? Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. And then I saw another hand. Was it yours? Yeah. Two and a half years. And how many have you closed? Okay. Awesome. Sweet. Um, let, let, I guess let's just get started. Um, today we're going to talk about what is a lot of people will say is kind of an antiquated way of marketing and doing business. Um, I, I get, I don't know if teased is the right term. It's probably the right term by other agents in, in our industry uh, that kind of tease me for marketing the way that I do. Um, and I just happily go about what I do and just claim the title of the number one top selling realtor in West Jordan. And I just keep doing what I do. So um, we're going to go through it. I'm going to you're welcome to take pictures of any slides that I put up here. Take some notes because we're going to go through everything that I do from beginning to end. So by the time you leave here today, if you feel like this is something that you want to add to your business, you know how to do it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. You can't get the presentation, but you're welcome to take pictures. Okay. Um, so let, let's just go through, uh, th this is, this is my mantra for 2021. I don't know if anybody else has one, but mine is just go get it. Like nobody is bringing me business. Nobody is going to hand me stuff. Uh, 2021, it, it, it's a, it's a tough business out there today, this year, last year. Um, so my mantra is go get it. That's on me to go get my business and close deals. If you don't have a mantra, something that's pushing you in the morning to get up and say, here's what I'm doing today. You can steal mine. I don't know where I heard this from. I probably stole it from somebody else. I don't remember, but it resonated with me early in the year. And I said, this is what I'm, this is what I'm about this year. Go get it because I can't sit around and wait and rely on anybody else to bring me business. I got to go get it myself. So you're welcome to steal mine, come up with a better one. Let me know what yours is, if it's better than mine. Um, and I might steal it from you uh, for next year. So um, where, so some of you are just getting started testing soon, a few months in the business, a couple years in the business, but I want to hear from you where you plan on getting your business from. 
Um, those of you that, so property management, you had investors that were offloading properties and cashing out or 1031 exchanging into different properties. So that's where your business came from. Your one, one deal? Yeah. Friend, okay. Um, where do you plan on getting more of your business? I do you engage more part-time and in, in or full-time? Where do you plan on focusing your business? Uh, okay. So Okay, so your SOI, right? Who plans to focus their business primarily on your SOI, your sphere of influence, people you know, family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, okay? Um, who, if you didn't raise your hand, where are you gonna get your business from? Okay. Okay, who are you calling? White pages from A to Z, right? <laughs> Just anybody and everybody, right? Okay, door knocking. Where are you going to door knock? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great idea. Awesome. Great. Love it. Who else? Other than, um, other than SOI, where, where are you getting your business from? Share with me. Facebook, it's like Facebook ads. Okay, good. Open houses, good. There's some amazing agents in our office. I'm not great at it, but that every time they host an open house, whether it's their open house or some, for someone else, they walk away with like three clients. And I'm like, I've been doing this for 24 years. I'm like, how do you do that? I'm not, I'm not that good at that, right? There are things that you will learn that, that you are good at and that maybe you're not so good at. Like I said, I've been doing this for 24 years and there are things that I know that I am really good at. And there are things that I see other people do. I'm like, I don't understand how you even do that because I suck at that, right? That is not, that's not my lane. I'm staying in my lane because that lane takes me off into some no man's land because I am not good at that. But try everything because you don't know yet what you're good at. So try it all. Um, and you can't just put all your eggs in one marketing basket. It's got to be multiple things. Um, we're talking about um, farming today, but that's not the only thing that I do. Um, that's where probably 80% of my business comes from. Um, so we have investors, SOI, door knocking, open houses. Anybody else? Yeah. So, so that would still be like SOI, right? So it wouldn't be like friends and family, but it'd be just relationships, right? Your, your sphere of influence, right? Um, so let, let's go into what we're going to talk about today. You are welcome to ask questions. I encourage you to ask questions. Um, I want you to share input. If you have experience, or just want to share, um, do that. If you ask a question and I'm not quite there yet, and you're asking a question about how, how, what does it cost? And we're still kind of up here. I might just say, hey, we'll get to that. So don't be offended. I, I want to answer all of your questions, but I kind of have an order and how I want to share this information to you. But please ask. And if it's the right time for me to provide the answer, I will. If not, we'll get to it, okay? And then we'll have a few minutes at the end where you can just ask whatever question you want, um, and we'll go from there. So here's what geographic farming is. This is not Webster. I don't, this is just my definition. Um, it's an intentional, purposeful, and consistent marketing campaign directed to potential sellers of a specific geographic neighborhood for the purpose of securing listings in that area. So I want to, I want you to know that this, this is the purpose is to get listings in that neighborhood. So if you're looking to work mostly with buyers, this is, this is not, this, this class is not for you. Okay. Um, if you, you could get buyers from this, but that's not the primary goal. Um, is it easier to be a, a represent sellers in this market or buyers in this market? Sellers, why? Why sellers? A lot less time. Generally, not always, but generally, sellers require less time, right? Buyers require more time in your car um, or just meeting at listings and showing one or eight listings in a day and then Rinse, lather, repeat, do it again tomorrow and the next day, and then write 
my um, my wife, she's licensed and she just joined my team. She's been my transaction court showing homes this year. Um, we're working with a first time buyer, veteran, VA loan, um, no cash in pocket buyer in this market. Um, my wife has written 13 offers for her and spent countless, between her and I, countless hours meeting her at houses. We finally got her under contract on a listing that I took and showed it to her before it hit the market. And in talking with my seller, it was, the numbers worked. Um, he was happy uh, with, you know, I didn't want to underrepresent him and put it on the market and not get him what he could get. Uh, we had that conversation. She was able to bring in a little bit more money um, from that she borrowed from a friend um, for uh, above appraisal. So it, it worked out as a win-win and she closes next week. She's single um, veteran, super, super excited. But I can tell you that my wife has spent a lot more time with those 13 offers and probably 50 showings than I did taking that listing from my seller and putting, why don't you bring Susie over? after 13 offers already with Susie, right? Um, so you're right, less time. Um, what's the, if you're working with sellers versus buyers, are buyers expensive to work with? Not generally, other than your time, right? If you're valuing your time, then of course, right? But cash out of pocket, gas prices are up. We're not gonna get into that. Um, but yeah, it can be expensive driving around, right? But are you gonna spend more money on a listing than a buyer? Absolutely, right? We spend between home stagers, professional photos, video walkthroughs, 3D Matterport tours, Facebook marketing, um, signage, other things, transaction coordination, almost $1,000 on every listing we do, right? When I was new in the business, I would spend probably $0 because I put a sign in the yard, I took my own pictures, and Facebook wasn't around when we first started. I know I'm dating myself, Facebook was not. I mean, we would literally, digital cameras weren't even around. We would take a picture have it developed and then scan it into a computer and then that, like scan the actual three by five photo into a computer. And that's how we uploaded our photos. Um, and then when you wanted to run an ad, it wasn't on Facebook, it was in the newspaper, right? So, and when you sent an offer, you didn't email it. And you didn't even, when I first started, Nick, this is predating you even. And, I'm really, this is not, this is off script, but this is resonating with me for some reason today. Before faxing offers, you would literally write an offer for your buyer, call the listing agent, set up an appointment to meet with the listing agent and the seller and present your offer in person to the seller in front of their agent at the seller's kitchen table at their house. Can you imagine, can you imagine doing that today, Nick? No way. Um, and can you imagine today when the seller had, 37 offers, you got to line out the door just waiting for buyer agents to present their offer to the seller. Um, we've come a long ways and things have, uh, technology has allowed us to work more efficiently with our time, right? Um, what we're talking about today is uses very little, if any technology at all. It's a very manual process, okay? Um, but let's get to what this is. J just I hate this slide, but I don't know, remember if it was Emily or Kimber that made me put this on there just because they're like, you need to at least let people know that it's working, right? So I hate this, but it's here. This is what we did last year. Um, in 2020, I closed 48 transactions, 35 of those 48. So only 13 were not from farming. So 35 directly from what I'm going to teach you today that literally in your business tomorrow and even do it at no cost to you. I'm going to show you how to do it to start out with zero dollars out of your pocket. Okay. I spend a lot of spend thousands of dollars each month now, but just do it with zero dollars. I remember when I started, I didn't have a budget. I didn't have any money. And so I looked for the cheapest, least expensive way to do this. Um, this year, our goal is not 48, but 60 closings. And, um, we're already on listing number 25 for the year. And I should, have, I should have looked, but I would say probably 20 of those 25 are from farming. So what we're gonna share with you today is already 20 listings worth in 2021. Questions? Okay. This is my West Jordan farm. 
So I live in West Jordan. I farm in West Jordan. Um, I live right here. Really my longest commute for my job is to come here this morning and talk to you guys today. My business is within three to five minutes of my house. Okay. Um, so it doesn't have to be that for you. Um, I, I decided that I wanted to start farming where I live and then I've expanded into neighborhoods that are close to there. And so I've, and I, and I, I didn't do all of this at once. We started with a small neighborhood, then went into another neighborhood and then added another neighborhood and added another neighborhood, right? We'll get into how you identify the neighborhood. Um, as you were asking, where's a, where's a good, a good place to door knock, right? Um, geographic farming is going to require some door knocking if you want to do it right and have success, right? Um, those are our listing closings, I think, in the last two years, maybe. So you can see they're all super close together. Um, what I like about this is that when we hold an open house, most agents, you know, they'll bring three to five signs put up in front of the house, one on the corner of the residential street, one maybe at the main entrance of the neighborhood. That's about it. If I hold an open house here, I'm putting signs on every single corner so that every person in that neighborhood that's driving in and out of the neighborhood that are three streets in are seeing my open house signs, but putting them on the entrances and exits of the neighborhood. And then I'm putting it at the entrance and exit of this neighborhood and of this neighborhood and of this neighborhood. Even though the open house is not down here, I want everybody in this neighborhood that leaves their neighborhood to know that Scott Hardy's working today. And I want them to see my name and my sign every Saturday, whether it's here, here, or here, right? I, I use 25 open house signs for every single open house. Yes, uh, I don't have a, pic, uh, a sample of that, but yeah, it's branded, everything's branded the same. So it has my name on it. It has my picture on it. A lot of agents don't like using pictures, a lot do, <clears throat> but that's how I've decided to brand my picture, my name, and my name is big. Um, we've transitioned from just myself to now my wife and I, and then in fact, my son got his license in February. So now it's the Hardy team, but the name is huge. Uh, so we're promoting the Hardy, the name Hardy, and then we have a picture. And on all of our marketing, all of our flyers, all of our Facebook posts, um, the listing sign, the open house sign look exactly the same. One says for sale, one says open house, right? Um, so everything looks the same. So that way, when they see a, a flyer from us, name looks the same, the picture looks the same. They don't have to read anything. They just, and I don't even care if they read anything on the flyer at all. I just want them to see and be reminded right? I'm trying to brand West Jordan with the Hardy name, like Nike has branded the swoosh throughout the world, right? Um, that's the goal. Um, so these are, th th these are listings we've taken outside of West Jordan, right? So you can see that we're not only in West Jordan. And I mentioned that about 80% of our business comes just in West Jordan from farming. But this is the other 20%. This is our SOI, right? So we're working past clients, friends, and family. And so we will help friends and family or referrals from friends and family and other places, right? Um, those were listings. These are buyers outside of West Jordan. So we're helping buyers. A lot of these happen to be West Jordan sellers who have purchased in a different city, right? That's the cross benefit of farming and having a marketing plan with the strategy of securing sellers. Because what do most sellers end up doing after they sell their house? They need a new place to live. So they're gonna go buy somewhere. In this market, um, well, in any market, they may have already talked to a builder and have signed a contract before they called you and say, hey, we gotta sell our house because our home is gonna be done in 90 days, right? Um, so you missed that opportunity to grab that seller as a buyer. But short of that, usually if you're representing the seller and they're lo moving locally and not out of state, they become a buyer, right? So you have spent money to market to get one client that now you got two, right? You got a comment? 25%. Um, no, not really. I mean, I haven't had a lot of people move out of state, um, but I probably get two or three. I refer out two or three a year probably. Um, and it, it depends on where they're going, like how much revenue that generates. But you know, if there's a, a $10,000 commission check to an agent that I refer my client to in Texas, I'm getting 25% of that back from making a phone call. It's 2,500 bucks. I do two or three of those a year. So that's an extra five to eight grand 
every year just for making a phone call and pairing up a great agent with my client, right? So that answer your question? <clears throat> so the other side benefit of having a strategy that is geared towards securing listings and working with sellers and concentrating your business in a particular area is I get buyers that will call me all the time. Um, just like our Susie, who we paired up with one of our sellers, right? Um, I have a list of buyers that are looking to buy a particular type of home in West Jordan. It could be first time home. And in, in the neighborhoods that I'm farming, there's townhomes, condos, entry level first time buyer homes, which when I started farming in these neighborhoods in 2007, those prices were like 180. And now first time buyer entry level home is like 550. It's insane. Um, but then all the way up to like estate trophy homes that are a million dollars. And so we kind of hit every price point. So we were pretty fortunate, right? Um, but the nice thing is, is that when we get a listing or we know we're going to take a listing, we go through our database of potential buyers and say, man, who, who have we talked to that's looking for a home like this? And before we even put the house on the market, we're going through that. And so in the last, I think this is five years, um, that we've double sided transactions. In other words, we, we represented the seller and then brought our own buyer that did not have their own agent. So that's 19 additional pieces of business that made us about $200,000 in additional commissions because enough people know that we do business in West Jordan and they're calling us and saying, hey, what do you have? I don't have anything yet. Can I get your name and number? I'll call you when we do. We call them back when we have something that matches what they're looking for and we pair them up, right? Especially in this market. It's tough to have buyers, but if you can just take a buyer and say, hey, I have what you're looking for. And if you can get them to write an offer to your seller that would resemble what it would look like on the open market, above list with some appraisal gap, um, with a free rent back if that's necessary, then the seller is happy because they don't have to like, basically in this market with so many showings, they got to basically move out of their home for the weekend because there's basically showings every 30 minutes for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so they're like, hey, I can get that kind of offer without having to go through that headache of all the showings. I'm happy. And so we've been able to pair up a lot of buyers, sellers. So this is, these are, this is 19 pieces of business that we would not have had otherwise. We would have had no place to place these buyers if we didn't have these listings with our sellers. So over the last five years, 200 grand in extra income just because of the way that we're doing our, our marketing and targeting sellers. Questions about that? I've had a couple and I will never do it again. It went okay. It went great actually, but I won't do it again because there's too much risk. I had a seller who paired with a buyer. The buyer had to sell their house. So I listed that buyer's house. So that's now triple sided. And then we had the buyer for their house. Four sides. That was amazing. That's a good day. When you go to closing, you close all four of those on the same day. That's amazing. The risk is if one of those goes bad, there's nowhere to point the finger, but right here, right? So I won't do one of those again. Um, I'll just probably to my wife so I can point the finger at her, right? when things go bad. Um, questions, comments? Here's some benefits. It's designed to create a constant flow of business. I can go into every year that I go into, I know without a ton of effort, um, I can probably close anywhere from probably 25 to 30 transactions without a lot of effort on my part because it's so systematized and automatic and we have such a reputation in our farm area that that just happens now. That didn't happen the first couple of years, right? It, it's a grind, it's a lot of work. But now I could sit back, put it on autopilot and close 25. I used to be happy with 25 until I got to 32 and 35 and then 40 and then 48 and then hopefully 60 this year. Um, so we're trying to always just push ourselves to do more and help more people. You become, your reputation becomes as the area specialist. I have people call me all the time that say, hey, what's going on over on this corner of, on this vacant lot? I don't always know, but I take the time to always research what developments are coming, what restaurants are coming, um, who's building new homes, what's the price point of, because people will always call and reach out, Facebook message, text me, call me, email me. Um, so I need to know what's happening in and around the areas that I'm farming. So whatever farm neighborhood you decide to go into, you need to know everything about the local schools, the parks, the things that the city puts on, you know, free events, movie nights in the park that cities might do, 
you need to know everything about everything, right? Yeah. It happens to be uh, one of them. We've expanded out, but it, we started, yes. Yes, several, at least a half dozen. Yeah, but none of them farm. And I'll see one of their signs pop up maybe once every other year because they don't do anything intentional to get business. It's really their, their core group of people that, that they might list for is within probably like It's usually where I see them because they don't branch neighborhood. Unless of course there's another association like through a church or something like that. Um, but even still, I have, it, I have at least six to 10 agents well, just in my neighborhood, right? And then in the other farms, I don't even know how many. I would guess there's at least 20. We, we farm 4,000 houses. Yep. I, 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 don't, I don't care if there's other agents there. Um, when we do our marketing, I don't send them our marketing. I don't want them to see what we're, what we're promoting, what we're doing. Um, if they do, I don't care but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not marketing to them. Um, but somebody, somebody is going to be that neighborhood specialist. Somebody is going to be the go-to person. And if the other agents aren't doing anything intentional, I'm going to do it. Yep. Yeah. So we'll get to that. <laughs> if I don't fully answer that, ask again, okay? But we will get to that, okay? Um, branding and re name recognition. So, and that's big, that's key, right? But what I don't want you to do, <clears throat> who in here has taken the DISC profile or know what their personality profile is, okay? If you know what your personality profile is, and if you are in the spectrum of like the very creative type, I'm talking to you, Okay because I'm not the creative type. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a high D, I'm a red, I'm a, a driver, just I'm a results oriented guy, right? <clears throat> I just want to see the result at the, at the end of the day. Uh, my son is very creative. He's studying graphic design at UVU and I brought him on to my team part-time to do all of our graphic design, all of our marketing, all the stuff I'm gonna show you about what we do. He's designed all that. Um, and I don't have the time or patience to go through the, the mental creative process like he does. But I'm talking to those of you that, that are that. <clears throat> Create a brand and then start marketing. But I don't wanna come back and do this presentation again and you're like, I need a refresher because it's been 90 days and I haven't done anything because I haven't figured out my brand yet, okay? Because some of you will do that. Some of you will, will be stuck on, it's not perfect yet. I can't send it out to the public because it's not perfect, right? Just create something print it and go do it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So funny you asked that. I was, we were at, in originally, we were at my, my dad's house. And when we, so we lived in Cal, California. My wife and I moved here, got into real estate, spent five years here, moved back to raise our kids in California. Spent four years there and just felt like, you know what? We wanted to raise our kids here. So we moved back here. In the meantime, um, when we first moved there, I dropped my real estate signs off and, and sold real estate in California for the four years we were there. So, had some stuff in my dad's house that I didn't have space for in my garage and, and it happened to be like my, I had my own brokerage back then. Um, and it was my, some of my real estate listing signs from back then, we're talking like 2000, that I created myself and then just sent and just say, can you make like five of these? And my son was just, He's 20 and he, and he found this sign from 20 years ago. And he's like, he was making fun of me. He's like, what is it? And I'm like, did I really put that out in front of people's houses? Like, I was so embarrassed about that. So yes, I, I, will, I, have, I have gone to people's houses that have flyers from like eight years ago, like with a magnet on their fridge because they're like, well, we knew when we wanted to sell, we wanted to call you and we didn't know if we would get anything else from you and so we just kept it and I'm like you kept that <laughs> that's the thing you kept right so yeah but it's just a matter of starting nobody knows your message until you start sharing your message it doesn't have to be perfect it really it really doesn't 
it, what they resonate with more than the message is the name and the branding. Do you just want them to recognize that it's you again? You again, that's all. Yes, absolutely. Yes, very good. Um, some other benefits. I'm going to go through some of these a little more quick. We have some really good detailed stuff to get to in a second. Um, the, the, you, are, you are listing more homes. What I mean by that is that when you list a house in your neighborhood that you're farming, it's going to turn into more listings down the road. And I'll tell you, the best marketing and the best advertising you can do in your new farm is to get a listing in your farm with your sign and then a sold sign right after you put the listing sign up. That is the best form of marketing. I'm not an advocate of not charging my value of, that I bring, which is 6% commission. But I, I will share this, and you can, you can do this however you want. When I've started in some new farms, and when I first started farming, and when I add and go into new farms, I will offer a significant this. I can door knock and talk to all the neighbors and say, did you know that I just listed your neighbor's house for 500,000 and we sold it for 565, 65,000 above what we were asking, which is a record price for your neighborhood. And we sold it in two days with 15 offers. Have you thought about selling? I'd love to do the same for you. You can't share that message unless you're able to have that success in the neighborhood. So am I willing to get to get more listings because of the results of that one listing. It's a marketing expense in my mind. I don't, I don't th then offer that again, right? That's a one-time deal, right? Um, the reduced commission as a marketing expense to have that result to then share with the neighbors. I'm not advocating that, that's just what I've done. Uh, and we've found some success with that. You win, more, you win more listings by selling current listings. Kind of the same, right? Your sellers turn into buyers. Oh, yep. Sorry, I thought we were, I thought there was one more after that. Yep. Okay. This, take a picture of this and take some notes. These next few slides are really why you're here. This is how to farm. I'll let you guys take pictures so I'm not sitting in front of anybody's camera. <clears throat> We're not going to go into the MLS because some people in here don't have MLS access because they're taking their test tomorrow, right? Um, still in their classes. Um, but if you need help to figure this out, Nick can help. Terry can help. Um, we have great resources here at the office to help you through this. But the, the important thing is, is to know how to research the, or not to know how to research it, but to know the data to research. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go through this. We want to find a neighborhood and it can be where you live. It can be, it doesn't matter where it is, right? You choose where you want to work. Um, you choose where you want to work. And then you do the research to see if it's a viable place, right? So what you want to find is a neighborhood that has a, an 8 to 10% turnover. What I mean by that is that if there's 100 houses, by the way, when you're starting out, just from a budgetary and time standpoint, because you, you should be knocking doors in your farm until you have that farm locked down, right? Um, so from a time and budget standpoint, you don't want to you don't want to take on more than 250 to 500 houses. That's kind of the, the startup range. If you do more, you can, but just know now you're funding and paying for advertising for 1,000 houses, which is twice as expensive as 500, four times as expensive as 250, and four times as time consuming as 250, right? So it's your choice, but the recommendation is 250 to 500, right? 
So let's just say 500 houses, 10% turnover, meaning that 10% of those homes sell every year. How many homes should we see that are selling every year in that 500 house neighborhood? How many houses? 50 houses, right? So 8%. So what is that? 40 to 50 houses. Because listings are down a little bit this year, I would say if you find a neighborhood that has maybe six or 7%, you might be okay. But then I would go into last year, 2020. And even that year was a little bit of an anomaly because we were in a worldwide pandemic, right? But I would go into 2020, if you're seeing this year or the last 12 months. So go back to a lot, not just this year, but 12 months. So you're talking June, what is today? June 2020th, 20, 21st, 22nd. June 22nd, 2021 to June 22nd, 2020. How many homes in that 500 house neighborhood sold in the last 12 months? And then do the 12 months before that. Then that year was a little, half that year was a little weird because of the pandemic. So maybe go back 12 months before that. The like half 19 into 20, you should see around eight to 10%. Why do we want to see eight to ten percent turnover? How does that benefit you? If there's five hundred houses and you're marketing every single month to five hundred houses and two houses sell every year, there's not enough business there, right? You're spending money to not get enough potential return. There has to be more. I am the number one top selling realtor in West Jordan, meaning I sell more homes every year than any other realtor in the entire city of West Jordan. And I just showed you, I only sold 35 houses in West Jordan. It's the fourth largest city in the state. There's 130,000 people in West Jordan. I sold 35 houses, but that made me the top selling agent in the whole city. So you can see that there are, nobody else is doing this. Otherwise there'd be other people with a lot more sales in West Jordan, right? But the point I'm, I'm getting to is that there has to be enough turnover. If there's not enough turnover, there's just not enough business, right? So you can say, hey, well, there's, this is the neighborhood I want to farm and there's a 4% turnover. It's your business. You can do it. Keep in mind that neighborhoods will cycle, right? Sometimes some of, one of my neighborhoods in my farms I saw maybe three out of 229 homes in this neighborhood. There were three or four that sold every year for like three years in a row. And then one year there was 40. It was just a timing. It was a first time entry level neighborhood. And everybody was there for three to five years and they were moving on and moving up. It's just a timing. So it could go in cycles. So if you were like, I really want to farm here, but the numbers don't justify it, then go back three, four, five, six years and see what it did six years ago. And if there was that amount, then you're just cycled down right now, cycle back up, right? Yes. Um, and and it's, it's not neighborhood specific, but in my opinion, it's price point specific. So if you want to market to like the million dollar luxury neighborhood, if there's a hundred houses, in, if there's a hundred houses in Pepperwood, there's one or two that sell every year, right? You go into a neighborhood and, and the price point varies by city. But you go into a first-time entry-level, first-time buyer home neighborhood, those have a higher turnover rate than any other neighborhood because they outgrow the house faster, they're moving up, right? So depending on what city you want to farm in, you check that price point of what would be an entry-level first. Because money does not allow you to door knock and door-to-door -door drop stuff. They don't allow soliciting. If you find one that does, go do it because they will turn over a lot faster, right? But it's your entry level, first time buyer price point that will turn over way faster. Yeah. No, because if there's one that's 15 years old, you know, they turned over three times already. You know what I mean? So you just have to go back. If it's a first time entry level neighborhood and you're like, why is it only at 5% last year? Well, go back three, four, five years and I bet you see. 10 to 15%. And so you're just in a down cycle. Yeah, if you, if you find a neighborhood that's three to five years old uh, and the price point was entry level, they're probably getting pretty close. And the, 
And that three to five years might get shortened into two to three years because what? They've seen so much equity in two to three years. They didn't have to wait five to seven years to make that move, right? So yeah, if you're looking at newer homes, then you're looking at anywhere from two to five years and they should be starting to cycle through. But I would start, if it was me starting today and I've started, when we, my wife and I moved here in Utah in 1997, we started a farm, first time entry level farm. Shut that business down, moved to California, started farming, um, first time entry level price point. Shut that down, moved back to Utah, started farming, first time buyer entry level, and now we're closing 45, 50, 60 deals a year, right? So um, I, I would stick to that first time buyer price point. Our farm has morphed into first time buyer and then second time home and even trophy homes because builders have just built around us. And that's what, kind of what they brought. Any other comments, questions about that? Good questions, okay. So eight to 10%. Here's what you also wanna determine. This is equally as important. Um, in, in my, this is what I was getting to about me dominating West Jordan. Even though I'm the number one top selling agent in West Jordan, some of my farms, I only, I only have eight, 10, 11% market share. Some I have 20, 25. Um, and it, it varies year to year. Last year in the neighborhood where I live, we had the most homes ever sell in that neighborhood in one given year, and it was 13 homes. And I sold 11 of the 13. This year, one home so far this year has sold this year. Cycle, right? Okay. Um, and I knew last year that that was an anomaly because we'd never seen that before. So I knew that this year I had to do something. I had to add something to my business to replace those 10 or 11 listings that I don't normally get in that neighborhood, right? It's usually two or three. Okay. Um, but equally as important as what I'm getting to is you have to know if you come into the Sycamores in West Jordan, you probably are going to want to go market somewhere else because that's my neighborhood. That's where I farm. That's where people know my name. And you don't want to compete with me there. You can, you can farm in other areas of West Jordan, but you probably don't want to come where I'm already working because my name and my brand is already there. Similar to if you, this is the research you're doing. When you pick your farm, you want to see what's the turnover. And of those 50 houses of those 500 that just sold, how many of those 50 were sold by the same agent? Right? So you're looking for a neighborhood that has no more than 10 to 15% dominance by somebody else. Okay? That excludes new construction. Obviously, the agent that represents the builder in that new construction neighborhood is going to have 100% or if they're working with another agent. You exclude new construction, right? It doesn't sound like a 10% market share is very high dominance, but everybody who in here before you got your license knew someone that had a license. Everybody in Utah knows somebody that's a realtor, right? Sometimes they know two or three and they're like, okay, which member of the family am I going to offend because I got to choose somebody out of the three, right? So a lot of people are just calling people that they know, which is why you should also be working your sphere of influence because people that know you can also call you, right? But you don't want to go into a neighborhood where somebody has 10 or 15 or 20 or 50% dominance. They already have a brand. They're already doing something intentional. So move on. Find a different neighborhood where somebody may have sold out of 50 listings. Maybe they sold one or two, two or three. But out of 50, if they sold five or eight or 10, they're doing something on purpose, right? If they sold two, it could be, but, and nothing for a long time, it could be that they sold one. And then because they did a great job, the neighbor called them and they sold that one. But if it's been nine months since their last one, they probably didn't do any follow-up and they've moved on, right? But if you can see that agent has eight or 10 or more percent dominance and the year before, same thing, you will probably want to just pick a different farm, right? Questions on that? That makes sense? Okay. Um, here, here's, here's the annual process. I'm going to go quickly through this. If this is your farm, you can send this um, second west to Bangator, and this is 102nd south to um, Shields Lane. That's probably like 112th south. You can send those coordinates to the title company and say, hey, can you tell me how many homes are here? And then probably the next day, they'll tell you. Or in four or five seconds, I can count all the rooftops on Google Maps and then I'll know. 
Again, I'm the D. I don't, I don't have patience, so I'm just counting. And then in 90 seconds, I know how many are in my farm, right? So you can reach out to your title company and have them do it, or you can just pull it up on Google Maps and just count the rooftops. So now you know that this neighborhood, we'll just round up, has 300 houses, right? How do I know that? I pulled up the, the, the border of that neighborhood and just counted all the houses. It's super easy. I have to usually do it three times because I double check the second time and it's always different than the first time, so I do it a third time. Um, but, you, but you'll figure it out, right? Okay. Um, I don't really want to spend a ton of time on this just because we're running, we're running out of time and there's team meeting coming after this. But here's what you're searching for. You, you want to know sold houses and take a picture of this because this is how you're doing your research and your data. And again, Nick and Terry can help you with this, but you're looking for really sold houses. In this market, you might also want to look at what's under contract, what's active, and what's backup, right? Because if it's sold, it closed. If it's active, and this market is going to sell. If it's under contract, it's going to close. If it's a backup status, means they're under contract looking for secondary offers in case the first one falls through, right? So search, when you're trying to figure out what the percentage of turnover is in the neighborhood, in the MLS, you're searching for these statuses right here. You just click on those under the status, okay? Sold, under contract, backup, and active. This is going to tell you how active that neighborhood is. And you're looking for what percentage of turnover? Eight to 10%. And you do it by identifying that status, all four of those statuses, right? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. We don't care. I mean, generally in a neighborhood, everything's going to be the same, right? I don't care. Two stories, ramblers, I don't care. Right. We just want to know you you picked you picked your neighborhood so you know what's there. We just want to know how much activity is going on. Um, what we're what we are doing is going when you hit sold, as soon as you check sold status, it automatically defaults to one year back. Okay. If you want to shorten that and say, well, what's happened in the last 90 days, you can delete this and go over here to number of days back. You can put in 90 days, 120 days, 180 days for six months. But automatically, when you check sold, it will default to 12 months back. Most neighborhoods will be the same type. Because, I mean, you're talking a neighborhood of 250 houses. They're going to be the same. Um, if you pick a neighborhood that has different stuff, then you're welcome to pick single family. You want to know what that's doing or condos, townhomes. Um, but you're choosing your neighborhood. And so if you want to separate that out into property type and what's moving and what's not, then you can put that criteria in. Okay. Um, then, soon, then you hit search and you're going to, you hit map search and you're going to see what's popped up. Okay. I'm going to go through this a little faster. You can take pictures. Um, but this is the process that Nick and Terry can help you with in terms of searching in the MLS for this information. Um, we've, we've turned this class into a, like, almost a, like a 90 minute class and we are doing this in 60 minutes since we have nine minutes left. There's still some stuff I wanna get to that's, that's important. So as soon as I see you guys are done, I'm gonna go to the next slide and just take a picture. I'll, I'll make a comment and then we'll go. Um, so really you're looking at the number of homes that sold and that in those 300 houses, there were 17, right? So it will give you the number. Um, and then all you're looking for, we don't, if it's sold, it's gonna tell you who the listing agent was and then also the buying agent. And it will tell you their, their companies. We don't care about the company and we don't care about the buyer agent. The buyer agents will bring buyers from anywhere. We wanna know who the listing agent was. Out of those 17 houses, all I'm doing I, on a sheet or just on a piece of paper, I'm writing down this agent's name, Stacy Thomas. Then I'm going to scroll down to the next sheet, to the bottom, and I'm looking at who that listing agent was. John Smith, Jane Doe, all the way through 17. If I get to another one that says Stacy Thomas, I'm going to put just a check mark or a tally mark for Stacy's name. I know she did too. And if out of those 17, we don't want anybody having more than 10 to 15 percent. So 10 percent is 1.7. So let's say we don't want Stacy having more than three listings in that neighborhood of 17 that sold. And if I see she did two, I'm probably okay. If she did four, if I see Stacy's name and three tally marks, she's got a 20, 25% dominance in that neighborhood. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wonder why, right? 
probably do is go back and check the previous 12 months before that. Did she do something in the, in the year before? This is a new thing for her. Is that an anomaly? But I know she has some dominance. And usually if they have more than 10, 15, 20%, they're doing something intentional and on purpose. So I'm moving on. Unless you want to go head to head with somebody who already has brand recognition, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's my red personality. So that's just me, but it's harder and it takes longer and it's more expensive and more time consuming, right? Okay, here's how, here's how you start your farming. We're gonna get into this. Take a picture, take some notes. This is how you start. And I'm gonna show you some samples of flyers that we use. Um, you're welcome to take pictures of those as well. So the first thing you're gonna do, and you wanna take notes on this, you wanna do an eight by eight. Who knows what an eight by eight is? If you read Gary Keller's Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, the red book, there you go. Have it up there. <laughs> so your first week, you, you door knock and you pass out flyers. The next week, you door knock and you pass out flyers. Third week, fourth week, every week for eight weeks in a row, you are doing a new marketing piece every week for eight weeks in a row. So for the first eight weeks, every week, they're seeing something from you. And that's how you do your shock and awe marketing campaign when you start in your farm. Yeah. Ideally, you're door knocking every single house. Um, if you're new and don't have a lot of business, you have time to do that. If you're working a full-time job and doing this part-time, that's going to be more challenging. The, the important key is get those marketing pieces out every week for eight weeks in a row. And door knock as many doors as you can. Imagine if you can hit, and I'll tell you, you're only going to hit probably 15 to 20% of the people that are going to answer the door. And 20% of them are going to be like, don't ever come back. Yes. Yep. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not even really tracking who, who didn't answer or who did. Because next week, I'm starting at the first house, and I'm doing the whole thing again. Can you imagine making contact with the same people that aren't offended that you're there um, every week? For eight weeks in a row, you've now you made eight face-to-face -face contacts with the same people, bringing things of value to them like market updates, interest rate trends, um, home equity appreciation. You're, you're not saying, hey, here's a coupon to McDonald's. You're not saying, hey, I'm the best thing ever. You're saying, hey, here's some information that you might find valuable about the real estate market in your neighborhood or in the state or in the city or nationwide. You're bringing them things of value that they're like, man, I can't wait to see what else they bring so I can get my new market update. I have never had anybody do this after an eight by eight. I've never had somebody call me and say, hey, it's been three weeks, where's my marketing piece? You know, I'm looking for the information. I never had somebody do that. Um, but so that's what you're doing. An eight by eight, start with an eight by eight. When you're done, you decide how you scale back. I, for years and years, we, we went from, we only did one a month for years, built our farming business one a month. Um, three years ago, we started twice a month the week and we start we saw our business scale a little bit so i would recommend eight by eight and then do every other week and you can see the importance of starting 250 to 500 houses instead of 2000 because you're eight by eight can you imagine 2000 houses eight by eight every single door you're knocking 2000 houses every single week that's time consuming okay um you're going to door knock you're going to fly, drop flyers you can send mailers we'll talk about the difference between Door, door or flyer dropping and mailers. Circle farm. That means if there's ever a listing that hits in your farm that's not yours, um, you a new listing hits, you're going to go knock the doors of 50 houses around that new listing. So you're circle farming. You're, you're farming around in a circle the 50 closest houses to that new listing. You can't advertise that it's for sale, but you can go to the neighbor and say, hey, I'm sure you're aware that your neighbor three houses down just listed their house. They listed for 500,000. It looks like on the MLS, it's already under contract. I've talked with the listing agent. They had seven offers for well above their list price. Have you thought about selling? You're bringing valuable data, right? They probably didn't even know what it was listed for. They wouldn't know how many offers and they wouldn't know that how much they could get for house until you brought that information to them, right? 
So Circle Farm, market with pieces that show and bring value. I'll, I'll show you some pieces. Always use a call to action. Call today for a free market an analysis. Something that you're saying, hey, do this. Reach out to me. Call today. Text. Do something. Bragging about your success without it sounding like you're bragging. I'll show you some things that I think that we've done a, a decent job with. And then create a system around what you're doing. If you don't create a system, you'll do this. Halfway through your eight by eight, you're done because your eight by eight will be 15 weeks later because you'll do it the first week, the second week, and then the third week turns into the seventh week. Then the fourth week turns into the 13th week because you don't have a system. Create a system, create a plan, time block, make a note of that time block in your calendar, what days and what time of day you are going to go door knock and drop your flyers. If it's not in your calendar, it is not gonna happen, I can assure you. Especially when you start to get busy, you want consistency. And when you get busy, you start doing the busy stuff because that's the fun stuff. That's what gets you paid. You have under contracts, you have listings, you're following up on stuff. That's what gets you paid. But guess what? When those fun activities that get you paid have paid you, there's nothing left to pay you next month. So you have to do this stuff while you're doing the fun stuff that get you paid, right? Yeah. I, I would try different times of day and different days of the week. I would try in the morning. I would try in the evening. I would try in the weekends because um, you're going to find, and I, and I would do it different every week, right? And I would even try different. I would start at different. If I'm going to start on a Monday at 11, then I'm going to start on this house at this corner. Then the next Monday at 11, I might start at this opposite corner because maybe you're hitting different people at different times. And some, some people at different homes are home at this time of day but the people over here might be home at different times of day on the same day, right? So I'd mix it up. So there is no right time. What I, what I do hesitate a little bit with is evening knocking, not so much in the summer, but during school time. Because I know in my house when my kids were little, somebody knocked on our door at like 6.30. It's like dinner, homework with four kids. I don't have time, right? And so you're interrupting a very stressful time with the family. And that's the last time. That's, talking to you is the last thing they wanna do, right? Um, so I would, I would hesitate in the evening time during school in the summer, it's probably free reign. Right. And that's just, that's just my own personal bias. Right. So you can try it. Um, summertime, I wouldn't hesitate doing that in the evening, but yeah, I, I would do mornings, evenings, afternoons, weekends, Saturdays. Definitely for sure. You can even walk. You can even say, Hey, I'm not knocking on any doors on Saturday. I'm just going to walk the neighborhood and have some flyers. And when I see families out mowing yards, playing with kids working on the car, I'm just talking to those people You can do that too. Right. Everybody have a picture of this? This is how you start your farm. Okay, we're gonna go, team meeting starts at 11. We're gonna probably go another 10 minutes, maybe 15, so that people can start coming in. Um, Cause this stuff, this stuff is important. I, I spent too much time on the fun fluff and not so, not, I didn't leave enough time for all the, the detail stuff. This is how you start farming literally tomorrow for free, okay? Let me tell you, let me, let, me, let me go to this and I'll come back. This is what our farming door hanger looks like right now. This, is, uh, this picture is on every one of our markets. Seen signs on our, uh, a movie event for all of our SOI and, and clients. We invited 200, 216 seat theater at Jordan Landing in West Jordan. Invited 216 of our past clients to watch Quiet Place 2. Right? We partnered with our lender who covered half the cost. By the way, make a note of that. You partner with a lender and he's an advocate of yours and you're sending him business. You can present to them, hey, I want to do some marketing and co-branding. They can cover up to 50% of whatever the cost of your marketing for your farm, a client event. You want to do a cotton candy truck at a neighborhood park in your farm. They can pay for half of that. So keep that in mind. Okay. Um, but this is, this is what this looks like. Nick, if I go, so long as we're done by like 10, 1045 so we can get team meeting in here, is that okay? Okay. I wanted to show you this because I'm gonna come, I'm gonna, I wanna come back to this. What I'm telling you is you can start tomorrow. As soon as you pick your farm, you can start marketing tomorrow for free because everybody here at the office gets 
200 black and white copies for free every single month, right? So you can create on one eight and a half sheet of paper, two flyers, right? Print one page, cut it in half, now you have two, right? So you can start farming to 400 houses with half sheets of page of flyers for free. Because you print 200, cut them in half, now you have 400. Granted, it's black and white. It's not color. It doesn't look like this. But to Nick's point, have, have I ever looked back and like, oh my gosh, did I used to actually put that stuff out on people? When I started, I had zero budget. I cre I, my first flyers were black and white printed, but I wanted to like spice it up. And so I had Office Max print them on, so remember the color, lunar blue paper. So it was on blue paper, black and white, like pictures of houses, black and white, text, black and white on blue paper. And I didn't want to do any, I didn't want to spend any money on rubber bands. And so I'd take an uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and I would walk up to the porch. I would roll it up like, like a scroll and then stick it in between the door handle and the door jam. Pretty professional because then when they open their front door, it just falls to the ground. So now I'm making them pick up my marketing piece from the porch, right? That's how I started. Black and white cost me four cents a copy. You can do it here for 400 for free. So don't worry that yours doesn't look like this. This is, this is iteration over iteration over two decades of us starting black and white on blue paper to this. This stuff's expensive. We have a budget to do it now. We didn't before. But what we did, black and white on blue paper is what started I listed zero houses my first two years. I represented six or seven buyers each year for the first two years. When I started farming, I listed four houses. The second year, I listed eight houses with lunar blue paper, black and white print. It works, right? And my branding has changed, right? But I only bring this up because I don't want you to think, well, I don't have the budget. You don't need it. At Keller Williams, you get 200 free copies. You do two per page and you have 400. As soon as you identify your farm, you can start the next day and go start farming. If you want to staple rubber bands to the top corner so you can hang it on the door instead of let it fall to the ground when they open the door, then it might cost you cents per copy, right? Questions about that? It doesn't sound like it's professional. But I'm telling you, I built my farming business on black and white flyers. Okay. Yeah. So, you know what that. Is. So where we get our stuff printed now. So we do color. Um, these flyers that I just showed you, these are like actual door hangers. Um, when they're printed and when they get, get delivered, there's a hole cut out so we can like actually hang it on the doorknob, right? Um, so they're long and skinny. They hang on the doorknob. We get those printed at UCI. Um, we searched and searched and searched to get that type of door hanger printed full color, double sided was 60 to 70 cents per copy at UCI. We get them printed for 12 cents. We do volume. And so that's a volume discount, right? But you'd probably be around 20 cents if you did that, um, which is way cheaper than 60 to 70 cents. UCI is at the point of the mountain and it's the Draper prison. They have a print shop where inmates that are soon to be released, they work in the print shop to get skills so they can come out and have a skill to be, to be hired at some sort of job in another print shop outside the prison, right? Um, full transparency, I'm not necessarily sending my business there as a humanitarian effort. I, I applaud the effort, right? But that's not what drew me there. It was the price, I'll be honest, right? Um, they do it at cost just to cover their cost. And so it's 12 cents to me instead of 70 cents, right? Um, you can print anything, banners, hats, signs, open house signs, listing signs, farming flyers, whatever you need, they can print it, right? And they do it way cheaper than anybody else, okay? Um, if you haven't, write their number down, take a picture, call them, you can email them. Um, I, I will let you know their turnaround time is a little longer. That's probably my only frustration with that, but the cost still outweighs waiting for my stuff to come, okay? Everything, super cheap, super cheap. And quality, like nice, as nice as any other print shop. 
you have to design it and you just send them your file and then they'll print it. Yep. Okay. Um, so what we do, um, I, right now, unless we're opening up a new farm, I don't door knock anymore because we have a brand. Like we're recognizable in our farms, right? Um, but when you, so what I do, when you get to this point, you can do this unless you want to start doing this, but I would recommend you do it. You spend your time, you door knock. But I, I hired just teenage kids. Some of them, my boys started, my oldest son was 11 when I hired him to start dropping flyers on, on doors in my farm. And his younger brother started when he was nine because I wanted them both to go together and I didn't want them to be by themselves. So from the age of nine and 11, my boys were passing out flyers in my farm for me. I'd pay them 10 cents a piece. So they would usually do about 250 houses. They made 25 bucks. That was an 11 year old, that was a nine year old. Took them like an hour and a half. Like that's, a, it's cheap for me and real good money for them. Right now we do about 4,500 houses a month and we do it twice a month. Um, we have 26 kids that my wife coordinates every single month to pick up flyers, pass them out and get them paid. Um, but we send it, we pay them 10 cents a door and we send them out in pairs just for safety reasons. We could do it and it should only cost us 10 cents per door, but I don't want them going by themselves. And so I send them out in pairs just for safety reasons. So it costs us 20 cents a door to deliver it, which if you, if you mailed a postcard, 45 cents. So it's already half the cost, right? Then mailing. So if you want to mail, you can mail it. It's more expensive. Um, I like the door, the flyer on the door, because in the mail, if you're like me, I open my mail on my kitchen island, and I'm like, I need that, that's garbage. I need that, that's garbage. I don't need, I, like literally, uh, uh, only enough eye time on it to know I don't need it. I'm not even reading it, right? So if I'm mailing my postcard, they're doing the same thing with that. Literally, like not even a half a second. And I know that my door hanger, they're throwing away too, except for the rare ones that they had for eight years magneted on their fridge. But at least from the front door to the kitchen trash, they might read it, might get like three or four seconds, right? So I'm at least quadrupling the eye time before it goes in the garbage, right? And I'm doing it at half the cost, right? Questions? Um, take a picture of that. We're not gonna talk about it, take a picture. We got to wrap up. These are just things you can do in your farm. Any, any expired listing, go talk to them. Any for sale by owner, go talk to them. Be consistent. Um, create a brand that's consistent so that they know like, when, when they see something on their door, they know it's from you, right? What's that? Facebook targeting. So when we list a house, we will run a Facebook ad and you can target your demographic. Like you can, you can say, hey, I want it only in West Jordan or I want it to expand my listing ad into, you know, 15 miles out from West Jordan. Um, you can choose your age demographic. You can put in keywords to say, I only want this to be in front of somebody who has liked another post that was a, a loan post or a fixer upper post or a real estate post or a realtor.com post. And so your Facebook ads will go to a targeted audience that you're choosing and you're paying for that ad. So we supplement our West Jordan branding with some Facebook ad targeting so that when we list a home, we're promoting our listings and we're targeting mostly people that live right in West Jordan so that our listings are getting put in front of the target audience that we're choosing, which are West Jordan residents that have a profile on Facebook. There's probably a Facebook class, I'm sure, that if there's not, there should be. <laughs> um, but Command, there's, there, there's tons of technology available. Command is an amazing um, client management system that Keller Williams offers its agents for free. And Command has now been able to integrate running ads through Facebook. So if somebody likes or comments on your post, Command captures their profile and saves it in Command as a prospect with name, number, and maybe even email address and phone number. So if you run your ads through command, it's even, it, it enhances your experience even more. So, but that, that's a different class, but definitely follow up on that. Um, let's see, these are some things that we do. Take pictures of these, I'm just gonna scroll through them. So just take pictures of some of the ads that we've done. This is bragging without bragging. I'm not saying, hey, I am amazing. I'm the best agent that you'll ever meet. 
what I'm saying though is, hey, Scott sold this in three. This, this by the way, is not 2021 market. Like this is when homes were taking like 45 to 60 days to sell. So I'm saying, hey, look, Scott sold this in six days. Scott sold it in three days. Um, so these are all homes that I sold within like a 30 to 45 day time period in a particular neighborhood in my farm. And I'm telling everybody in that farm, I just sold your neighbor's house for this price in these many days, right? So it's kind of bragging, but not really, really braggadocious. So this is the lender that I market with. This is our, we've updated our branding and pictures and all that kind of stuff. Take a picture of this one. This is hard to see up here and I apologize for that. But what that is, is basically a neighborhood market update. Um, it's saying, hey, this house on this street of, with this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms, this square footage, this much finished basement sold at this price. And so we're updating the neighbors saying, hey, if you have a home that looks similar to this in size and square footage and finished basement, this is what your home could be worth, right? Um, the MLS has come out with new guidelines saying that we cannot advertise any home that sold on the MLS that is not our, our own listing or our brokerage listing. This isn't really advertising. It's just kind of a market update, but they don't like this either. So I still do this, but I take off the address. So now it's just the, the pure data. It's just saying, hey, if your home has this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms, um, this square footage, this much finished basement, it could be worth this, right? So far, that's a workaround. I have not been flagged for doing it that way. Um, so again, I'm more of a taker when it comes to that. I'm not saying take risk, but um, that's, th th people love that. They love the data. And again, this is adding value to the neighborhood because they're like, man, that's the same floor plan as mine. That's the same square footage, same percent of basement finished. I didn't realize my home would be worth that much. Like that's what they love, right? Um, again, these are the um, door hangers that we use now. On the back side, I don't think I have a picture of it, but on the back side, we're putting a message um, call today for a free market analysis. If it's a new farm, I'll say, hey, we'll list your home for 2,000 or save 5,000 or whatever it is, right? To just get that first listing. So on the back side of that is where we're running that promotion and that call to action. So th this is where I've changed. There's no address. This is just saying, hey, just pure data, no address. That's where we've changed it. <clears throat> and then we did start this year um, targeting some townhomes and condo complexes because those we, I knew I needed to replace those 11 listings in my with some other listings. And I found some townhome condo complexes in West Jordan that we had not been targeting that had some high turnover last year uh, and the year before. And so we started targeting them and so these are the only mailers that we do. This is a postcard. You can see the branding is the same, like the Hardy Real Estate logo, um, the picture's the same, the colors are all the same. When they, when they see that, they don't even need to know what the message is. They are just reminded, what, wh whether that's good or bad, they're reminded it's from Scott Hardy and the Hardy team. It, it might create some, oh, I, I wanna see what he says, and it might create some again, right? So um, that's, that's the back page. That, that's the front page. That's the back page. So again, this is going into a brand new farm. So we're saying, hey, we'll save you three grand. You hire us, we'll save you three grand. I just want my sign in that neighborhood, right? Uh, we, we are targeting three townhome complexes and in two of them, we've already had listings, okay? Um, some other ideas, take a picture of this. Um, some things you can do to get, to it costs money. So you can do it. You can have your lender also help do it. Um, but you can do a neighborhood movie night in the park. There's companies that do that. You don't have to have the equipment. It'd be a few hundred bucks to hire them to do that. But, or if you have your own blow-up screen, your own projector, your own sound system, you can do that. Hire an ice cream truck, a taco truck. Um, there's lots of agents that will do like Easter egg hunts uh, at a neighborhood park. So you can, you, can per, you can do all of that kind of stuff. Um, so really... Well, this is the way that I have built my business over the last 24 years. Um, last year, we made almost $400,000 using the techniques I just shared with you today. And that doesn't include the other, you know, 15 transactions that was another, you know, 200,000 on top of that. But just with what I shared with you today, 
that's over time. I don't expect, if you do, that's amazing to come talk to me, but I don't expect that you're going to close 35 transactions in your farm next year, in the next 12 months. But what if you can, what if you can close five or six? And then you add another farm of 500 and you close five or six in your original farm and then five or six in your, farm. you close 10 or 12 listings. That's 150 grand. Just with what you learned today. You didn't even pay to learn this stuff, right? This was free. Keller Williams is amazing. They offer these opportunities to learn from people that are in the trenches, sharing with you our secrets of what we've done. And you've made a great choice to be here with Keller Williams because they add that value to you. Um, you have Nick and you have Terry and a team, a staff that is amazing. So reach out to them if you have questions. Let's just end with any comments or questions and then we'll send you on your way because team meetings in like 12 minutes. So last minute comments, questions, anybody overwhelmed? Anybody like, I can't do this? Anybody, exci anybody excited to do it? Okay. Oh yeah. So I typically would only go to any like, like city council meetings or planning meetings when there was something coming in West Jordan that I could tell the residents weren't super happy about. And then I would go and advocate on behalf of the citizens of West Jordan. Right. Um, and, and I do that. There's several pages in West Jordan, like community pages. And so I'm, I, I'm, I'm a member of all of those community pages. Right. Um, so I'll go to city council meetings and I'll speak on behalf of our, you know, the, the neighbors of, of West Jordan. Um, several years ago, there was, they had proposed when they, who, who here remembers the relocation of the Draper prison? That was coming, right? What, neighbor, what neighborhood do you live to, live in? Eagle Mountain. Yeah, so Eagle Mountain, Tooele, West Jordan. Literally the proposed site was in West Jordan that was literally, um, a, a two neighborhoods was all of which was where I farmed. Um, so I organized with some friends of mine, a town hall meeting in the elementary school. Seven days, we had 2,500 people from our, mostly in my farm, come to the, to the elementary school. And I was able to get state representatives there, um, the West Jordan mayor, half the city council, um, and so that, that honestly, that helped a ton because I was, I conducted that meeting. I ran that meeting. I made calls to get all those leaders there. So they saw me as an advocate for West Jordan, right? I still get people that will stop me in a grocery store and say, Hey, we appreciate the fact that there's no prison here. Right. Um, but yeah, being involved in the community. Um, and I, so I, I wouldn't go to every meeting, but when there's something that pops up in the city on an agenda, um, that the citizens are not happy about, I will go and I will advocate for the residents for sure. Yeah. Other questions, comments. Okay. This is, this is, it's your business guys. You can run your business how you want. You can advertise and market how you want to who you want, but the only level of success that you're going to see in your business is the level of effort that you put into it. And so it's up to you to make it success successful. And you have a great team of Keller Williams agents and leaders behind you to make it happen. So good luck out there. Thank you. You bet. Sorry for going over.